Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. This video is a little bit more technical. It kind of gets a little bit into the weeds of Microsoft Teams where I'm going to take a look at both some features that are available to the team owner or the teacher of a Microsoft team as well as some features that are only available to team administrators through the Microsoft Office 365 administration portal. Now these features are all around uh, team member engagement and participation in the team. So in an educational setting it's very important for us to understand whether students are participating in a team environment uh, we can do that through a number of tools, so I'm going to show you how we can look at things like uh, in attendance, which I've done a separate video on, but I'll repeat it here, and we can look at things like team engagement through the analytics that are available to us in a team. I'm also going to go into the Office 365 Team Administration Center, and I'm going to look at more detailed statistics where I can drill down to the individual. Now, my hope is that at some point, Microsoft makes some of those uh, administrator analytics available to team owners. This would be incredibly useful, especially for uh, instructors that want to be able to catch students that might be at risk. They've dropped off, they're not participating, and it'd be nice to see sort of when that happened. We can definitely capture attendance. We can definitely capture a sense of participation as a general rule, but that individual refined individual student participation really requires us to go to our team uh, team administration portal in Office 365. It's maybe a little easier to see than uh, me explaining it right now. So let's go have a look at that. Uh, if you do like this video, hit like. Uh, if you want to see more videos, maybe not quite as technical as this one, but that will help you utilize different technologies for learning, then go ahead and subscribe. Let's have a look at analytics for Microsoft Teams in Microsoft Teams. For the purpose of this video, I've created a new team called My New Team, and it's just got some channels that I've created. It's actually a copy of a previous team that I had. And if I go into the ellipse here, I can go in and I can add members, I can edit the team. If I go into edit the team, I can put more information here, change the name of the team and such. But if I hit the ellipse here, I wanna show you that when I go into manage the team, I can actually go across here to a tab called Analytics. And you'll notice right now, just before I do that, I'll just drop down the members so you can see who I have as members. But I'll go into my Analytics and you'll see that I have six users, seven apps, and absolutely no activity on this channel. I'm now gonna go and log in using some of those accounts, do a few different posts so we can see some new analytics come in. I've gone in and if I look at my new team here, you'll see I've done a number of posts. So, you know, vendors commented in the general channel, Clark has commented, Bruce has commented in here, but all of these analytics, and if I go into, I actually didn't want to go there, sorry. If I go into my new team in the breakout room, I have some comments and uh, breakout room B, I have some comments. So there are a number of different uh, activities that have occurred in this team. So let's go into the ellipse, go into manage the channel, and I'll go into my analytics. And you'll notice here that it still shows, you know, that there's six users and there's seven apps, but there's no real data available here. And that's because it doesn't update in real time. It takes a little while before that data will become available to me. Let's go to one of my old teams here, the Superheroes for Education. And let me go into the ellipse here and I'll go into Manage Team and go to Analytics for this channel. Now, you'll notice also it says no data available. This channel is one that I used very briefly to do some demonstrations a while back. So I'm gonna go for the past 30 days, and there you'll see it's a very active channel. So obviously in a real world scenario <clears throat> where you're looking at uh, Teams Analytics for uh, a very active groups, so you'll see a lot more activity in terms of active users and you can go into meetings and see when meetings were held and you can look and see the level of engagement. But you'll notice this does not dig down to the individual level and I can't look at an individual's engagement. And that's to me or to my mind as an instructor, that's slightly problematic. It does give me an idea that my channel and my team has been, or my team is being used, but it doesn't give me a lot of rich analytics here. Um, what I'll need to do is when I have a meeting, so if I go into a meeting here, and if I start a new meeting, so I'll go in here, I won't put the video on here, so I'll turn the video off, 
And if I do a meeting here, we can have a meeting and such. We can raise hands. But if I go into here, uh, one of the things that we can do at the meeting is if you go to the people and you go to the ellipse here, you can download the attendance list. So that's one way of me saying, okay, who is participating in a meeting, a specific meeting, and I can capture attendance. And I've done videos on that before. I'll just hang up that meeting. So you can see that that's not perfect because I can't use a, com a combined or a aggregated analytic, but there are workarounds. What I can do is through my IT department or if I have administrative access to the team administration center in the Microsoft administration center. And if I go into the team administration center, I get a lot more details on what's happening in my team's environment. I can control teams, I can do a lot more here. So it is worth asking your IT department if somebody has been dedicated to being a Teams administrator. And it is worth getting familiar with some of these things, which I will do on this channel. Underneath here, you'll see that I have an analytics and reports icon, and I can go into my usage reports. Click on here, oh, come on. Click on here and click my usage reports. And it can be a little bit tricky. I don't know why it's doing this for me right now, but if I click on there and go into my usage reports. So underneath the reports, there are a lot of different analytic and usage reports that I can get from my IT department. Some of these are really uh, aimed at things like uh, phone call usage. So Teams is really the evolution of Microsoft Skype. So you can see that we have PSTN stands for publicly switched telephone network. It's an old term that just basically means phone systems. So I can look and see what's happening there. I can look at device usage for different devices that are enrolled into Teams, live event usage if I'm running live events. I'm going to look really at the Teams usage and the user activity. If I look at Teams usage, so I'm running Teams usage, I can choose a date range. So once again, I'm going to choose the last 30 days and I'm going to run this report. And underneath this, you can see if I go along here, I can see different Teams usage in here. I can see how many active channels I had in here. I can look at active users in here. Once again, this is a very light channel because I'm just using this for the purposes of demos. But you can see that some of the teams have been deleted. So the names are no longer appearing there. So these are old ones that I used. But if I look at the superheroes of education, you can see that there are seven active channels, two posted messages, and I can scroll across and see exactly what's happening in great detail on that particular team. And if I go further down, which I cannot do at this point, but my new team will appear in there as soon as some analytics have been gathered. Okay. And if I go into user activity, so I can go into user activity for the past 30 days and run that report. This is a useful report where I can look at individual users. I can see what they've done in terms of channel messages and posting messages. So let's take someone, for example, like Clark Kent. And if I scroll upon, across here, you can see Clark participated in one meeting. You can see that uh, one group call audio time was 30 minutes and 58 seconds. Video time was the same. Uh, in terms of how much screen sharing they did. So we can start getting a little bit more deeper analytics as to how much individual users in my environment are participating in terms of what they're doing with Teams. So this is something that your IT department might run for you on a, you know, maybe every week you get a report on Teams user activity. It's not, in my mind, a perfect analytical scenario. And I do recommend that you take your own analytics by doing attendance and by going through your team and sort of looking for any students that might not be attending. But this is a great way to follow up on some issues. So if you have a student that's not attending meetings, you can maybe ask your IT department to do a user report for that particular individual. So let's grab Clark Kent here. And then that will give you some insight into whether that student is just not participating in meetings or whether that uh, individual, let's go back, I'm sorry. I just want to do this for the past 30 days just because I've done demos a, a few weeks ago. So if I go into running the report and I can run, let's run Clark Kent again. So underneath Clark Kent, it'll go through and well, I can go through and see exactly what's happening in terms of what's what's happening with Clark for the past seven days. So Clark hasn't done anything in the past seven days that will come into play if he's done something today. I'll see it tomorrow. 
So there we have it. As I promised, that video was a little bit more technical and did require us to have some elevated privileges, not just as a team owner, but also as an administrator. So if you're trying to use some of these analytics, you may have to involve your IT department. And I think that maybe in the future, what we'll see is more IT departments having dedicated team administrators or allowing for some uh, individuals within an organization to have the elevated privileges to go into that team administration portal so that they can run weekly reports on individual student engagement. At least I hope so. I do know there are also some third party companies that can work with academic institutions to run some uh, power app type of scenarios that will help us identify students at risk. Uh, or we can build those ourselves if we have the in-house capability. Anyways, very technical this video. Hope it was still interesting. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in some of the other videos. Take care.